I'm Leo Warder for Kit Guru, and this PC is the Mesh Liquid P3-KG. Mesh because it's made by Mesh Computers, Liquid, Liquid Cooled, P3 because it's a Thermaltake Core P3 chassis. You can't call it a case, it's a chassis. KG for Kit Guru. This is a Kit Guru special. And the funny thing is, I've seen it all before. The number of gaming PCs I've seen at the likes of Computex built into a Thermaltake Core P3 chassis, it, it just feels like it's dozens of them. Uh, Thermaltake's enormous stands are covered in PCs such as this because of course it shows off all the Thermaltake hardware so it's very easy when you've been doing this sort of job for a living you know reviewing PCs to get a little bit blasé you've seen one open PC of this sort you've seen them all you might think so it really did me a power of good to have this PC on the test bench the other day and a bunch of teenagers visited the family and they walked in and were just gobsmacked absolutely jaws literally on well not literally but jaws on the floor uh, just amazed to see, which of course is the exact desired effect for a PC such as this. It's like, wow, it's the impact, the bling factor, and it's got it in spades. As to whether it's your personal taste, that's a different story, but the Thermaltake Core P3 is all about showing off the innards, the components, because of course there is no inside and outside, it's just laid out. Whether you have the PC stood upright, laid down or wall mounted, that's a matter of personal choice. This is obviously vertical on the feet. And then you've got the cooling components, which are all Thermaltake on show, and uh, that's all lovely. Uh, you'll note there's a riser card on the EVGA GTX 80 Ti graphics card, which means that it is also on show rather than laying flat. What's not to like? But there's a bigger question to tackle before we get into the ins and outs of the cooling and such, like which is the processor? Processor, KB Lake Core i7 7700K. Now I've got to be honest here, this PC has been sat here for a little while because I got sidetracked by the whole launch of Intel Coffee Lake, the 8th gen processors, so 8700K, 6 cores. That's all fine, but what it meant was when this PC first arrived, my immediate reaction was, oh blimey, Coffee Lake is imminent, everyone knows Coffee Lake is imminent selling Core i7 7700K, that's a hard uphill struggle. As it turns out, since the launch of Coffee Lake, we appear to have just a drought of, of uh, processors. They're, they're just not available. And by the sound of it, not available for a month or two, possibly till the end of the year. So in a way, this is good. Had I reviewed this thing promptly, I'd be saying, ah, Coffee Lake is imminent any day now. Why do you buy a seventh gen? Now the situation is, okay, we know eighth gen is around. 7th gen is here, you can still buy it. You cannot buy 8th gen realistically for a while. So if you want a PC during 2017, this is one to consider. If you're prepared to wait a few months, well, were you to go back to Mesh and say, hmm, that 8th gen, what do you think? I cannot believe they find it very hard to upgrade from Z270 to Z370 from Core i7 7th gen to Core i7 8th gen, but that's a conversation you need to have with them. So the hardware, it is Thermaltake almost throughout, or certainly all the components that Thermaltake makes. So you've got a Thermaltake uh, hardline cooling system, uh, their RL240, because the radiator is a 240mm radiator, and it's 60mm thick, very, very chunky radiator, with a pair of their ring fans with yellow lights. The pump and reservoir is theirs, as indeed are all the fittings and such like, and the block on the CPU. The problem with a system like this is never the CPU, it's always the GPU. The GPU consumes two to three times more power than the CPU, so to my mind, what you want to do is to liquid cool the GPU. Uh, I'd actually rather have a liquid cooled GPU than CPU, but ideally both. Uh, so in that sense, this is all wrong. However, it has to be said that if you look at Thermaltake's website, you look at all the demo systems they've got built using this sort of chassis, Mesh has absolutely followed the book to the T. Uh, the liquid cooling goes on the CPU, air-cooled GPU. Two of the major components are supplied by Corsair, so we've got some of their RGB DDR4 memory, uh, that's running at 3333 MHz, 32 gig kit, and also the power supply, which is a CX850M, that's a hybrid modular system, and that's 850 watts. Good power supply, like it. So thermal take, Intel, Nvidia, Corsair, all good stuff. The uh, lighting in the system is actually controlled by uh, the Aura uh, from Asus. Uh, it's an Asus ROG Maximus 9 Hero motherboard at the heart of the thing. That quite clearly is a major component. The RGB lighting in both the memory and on the motherboard is controlled by the Aura software. That works absolutely fine, but I had to set it to yellow to avoid it just looking peculiar. Yellow is a very strong color, and if you start using like a rainbow marquee or something, it just looks odd to my eyes anyway. You do have options. You can select different coolants uh, when you specify the system. You can go for clear, blue, red, black, purple, green, orange, or white. 
Any of those, uh, to my mind, would look perfectly decent. It's a matter of personal taste, obviously, which you go for. But uh, the lighting and the coolant, they're going to interact in different ways. I mean, there are certain color combos that just work, red, black, for example. But uh, if you have, uh, say, white coolant and then you went for a rainbow marquee, I think that would also look somewhat peculiar. But certainly the yellow yellow throughout, that works for me. Uh, one thing I don't particularly like about the chassis in terms of the cosmetics is the uh, acrylic panel, um, which is sort of held on with these uh, four caps that go on these four posts. Uh, I just don't like acrylic. Uh, I'm used to tempered glass these days. Some of the cases in the Thermaltake range, the P5, the bigger version, uh, is glass. I would like to see that replaced by glass. Um, it, it just seems completely out of date these days, and it's such a visual component of the system. Now you might look at this chassis and think to yourself, hmm, it's basically a flat test bench turned through 90 degrees and vertical. Uh, and to a certain extent you'd be correct, but actually the chassis opens up. Uh, inside it has storage and also cable routing. Uh, so it is somewhat more clever than it first appears. It is not just a flat test bench to which you can bolt a bunch of components. It is also fairly versatile in the sense that you can, if you choose, instead of having this 240 radio, you can go all out to 420. Uh, you can go much, much larger if you want, uh, or 360. So if you chose to uh, extend the loop, you could certainly change the radiator for one that's more substantial and indeed add more fans. So instead of having the two ring fans, you could have three very easily. And indeed, you could put someone around the chassis elsewhere if you chose. Uh, obviously, it is entirely open. There is zero sound deadening. So any fan noise you just can't avoid it. The, the rushing of the air is there. So you want low and slow fans given half the choice. I'm sitting here, I can hear the thing is constant and it's just idling at the moment. But it does not get very noisy at any point. It just gets slightly noisier when it's working hard. So in that sense, not a problem. Uh, the IO panel, this in that sense is the front. That over there is the back, which is a bit peculiar. If you want to stick a flash drive or something in it, then that's all great. Uh, but it's um, it's so sort of uh, bizarre in terms of the front, the back, the top, the bottom that uh, Mesh has actually put the Windows 10 license key on a piece of paper stuck in a plastic bag to the outside, the radiator there. Something I don't really expect to see, but uh, not even entirely sure if the owner's meant to just leave it there just in case they need it or if it's meant to take it off and keep it safe. Hmm, don't know, actually, probably should have asked. Um, there was something very peculiar about the system when it first arrived, which is that the PC arrived with the processor running at stock clocks and also the memory was running at stock clocks uh, and I just didn't understand this. This is a high-end expensive PC that costs £2,600 including VAT uh, and yet they, Mesh hadn't even enabled XMP in the BIOS and I, I just didn't understand. In fact, I was concerned that I'd managed to pull the power cord by mistake at some point and reset the BIOS. Uh, so I got in touch with them. The thing is that there's an option when you're configuring your PC on the Mesh website. You pay a small fee, it's I think £12, I mean trivial amount of money, for them to overclock the system. Uh, they didn't say what they would overclock the system to, they just said they would overclock the system. And this had arrived without being overclocked, which just seems like a howling error. Uh, for a review, obviously I wanted to go as fast as possible. Uh, so got in touch and they said, are you competent to overclock it? I said, give me the settings, I'll do it. They gave me the settings, I did it, and it worked absolutely fine. They were very specific with the settings to use. Uh, it's actually changing a bunch of the voltages, just tweaking here and there. But the CPU is sitting at 4.9 gigahertz, and XMP means the memory is now running at 333 megahertz, which obviously helps performance. Uh, but the very idea that there should be any question of paying any sort of premium, even £12, to overclock a PC of this sort of price and this level, I. I find just peculiar. By definition, this thing should arrive giving you the max. It looks, if you like this sort of thing, very good. It's built well, it performs. It should also deliver the max gaming frame rates. Now, the combination of overclocked Cable Lake 7700K and GTX 1080 Ti and a bunch of uh, Corsair fast DDR4 memory obviously means it's uh, a high-end gaming PC. I mean, it, it just hauls through everything, no two ways about it. So that is a given. This PC can absolutely deliver. Uh, it's top-notch hardware, no problem whatsoever. But let's put it back. Who's actually going to buy a PC like this? Uh, and this is kind of where I struggle a little bit, because to my mind, your typical DIY enthusiast, the type of person who I think reads Kit Guru, watches Kit Guru, is probably not in the market for a system like this. They might look at this and go, ah, 
okay, I've seen things like this before, I'm gonna do something like that myself, and then they'll go off and they'll do their own take on it. But I'm not certain about where you end up using it. That's the thing. It makes sense to me to stick it in the front room next to the TV, but by goodness, it's gonna be just the, the focus of attention in the living room. Relatively speaking, it requires a huge amount of space. I mean, I wouldn't fancy hanging it on a wall. Uh, the idea of wall-mounted PCs for me is just weird. But again, other people do what they do. So the idea you've got is stood on the floor next to your 4K TV. By all means, it will work absolutely excellently. Of that I have absolutely no doubt. It's just it doesn't fit into my life. Having it in the office, for me, I want it, well, apart from the fact it needs to be on show, so it's up on your desk. But I don't want this PC sat next to my ear. So logically, it's going to be by a television. So you have to ask yourself, is this a PC you could have sat right there in your eye line all the while long? Uh, and I suspect that the number of people that are going to ask that is very few and far between. But if they do, there's no doubt about it, they are going to get a decent amount of performance. I mean, that's absolutely for certain. However, I would strongly recommend before they shell out the cash to have a word in mesh and say, oi, that coffee lake, what do you reckon? If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. This is the Mesh Liquid P3KG.